hard plastic. So that's an inconvenience, but I've got an extra hour each day just to do stuff like this. Gloves are good if you prefer. So we're gonna do the first oil change on the 2018 Raptor with about 1,600 miles. The reason we're going to do that so early is just for peace of mind with a fresh new motor. Before I tow, I wanna change the oil. So using 5W30 Mobile One Synthetic and an FL500 Standard Motorcraft uh, oil filter for the first change. Now to get through, there's a couple plates that need to be removed. Uh, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket and also a Torx a 40 bit to remove one of those as well. So on the front skid plate, we've got these that need to be removed. And this is going to give us access up to the oil filter. Now coming around on the back side, we see this drain that's been engineered. Obviously when you take the oil filter off, you're going to get some oil spilling. And what that's gonna do is gonna drain down through the plate that we take off. You're gonna to need to use the uh, T40 bits to get the cover off. So there's the oil filter through the opening in the skid plate. You're gonna to have to reach up underneath there. Grab that. If you have incredibly large and strong hands like myself, you probably should just be able to twist that thing off. There is a plate and Right up behind this right here, you can see that yellow drain plug. And it is simply a twist and remove. Hold in those tabs. And we're gonna get oil shooting out all over the place. So we're gonna hold up the pan and try to prevent that as much as possible. And here are the 10 millimeter bolts on that little cover to give access for that oil to come flying out at you. So that should be fun. So why change your own oil, you might ask. Well, hey, every able-bodied man and woman should know how to change their own oil in a vehicle. And you never know who's at the dealership doing your oil change. They could mess things up pretty easily. We hear stories about different oil being used and over-tightened filters, stripped threads, although that shouldn't be an issue on this. A few people have had issues with the plastic oil pan warping and possible leaks developing. So we're going to keep an eye on that. What the, f are you serious? And that folks is why plastic sucks. One of the tabs broke. Uh, we have sort of a problem here. So here's the plastic drain plug. One of the tabs broke, which doesn't make much sense, I don't think, to put a plastic oil pan or a drain plug. When it heats up, cools down, expanding, it's just not as strong as metal. But I suppose Ford has their reasons and maybe now because I have to go buy another one, that is one of their reasons. Nice. So my drain plug broke. So I'm on my way to get a new one. I surely hope there's enough oil in that oil filter that I didn't take off so I can get there safely and back. Noobs, there might always be somebody. And that, my friends, is why it's good to have two vehicles. What is Ford thinking? Let's put a plastic oil pan and a plastic drain plug in our Ford Raptor. And it's only like $3.99 for a new one. So I recommend <laughs> Obviously, if you're going to do it yourself, which I probably defeated the purpose of, uh, this is one reason why you maybe don't want to do it yourself, because if it's at the dealership getting oil change done, and this happens, they probably will have one. But interestingly, I called uh, four dealerships uh, before I found one, 
and I got one dealership that's going to order me in uh, two for tomorrow um, after I did order those. I found one that has one in stock, so I'm going to pick that up right now. Yeah, probably about a half an hour round trip. So, yeah, I guess that's part of the part of knowing. So, hey, have an extra one of those drain plugs on hand if you're going to do your own oil change. Today's lesson so far. Hey, I called about an oil drain plug. So I'm back from that debacle. Turns a little click there. Hopefully you heard it. Overall, it's not that messy of a job. Got a whole lot of oil drips down here. Wipe things off just to keep it under control. If you're not able to get it off by hand, you can use one of these cup filters that has uh, an extension to your ratchet. That will work as well. Doesn't need to be super tight and you don't know who did it before you on a new vehicle. Put some new oil on the O-ring. Tighten this down by hand. And if you wanted to, you can maybe a quarter turn with this, but it does not need to be tight, just so it's not coming off down the road. I didn't even get any on my hand. That's pretty good. And that opening right there is where it will drain out the back from taking the filter off. I like to wipe off the surface with a rag. Not a whole lot of drippage from there right now, but it is a drain. Six quarts is the capacity, so you don't forget to put your cap back on. You can put it by the latch. I've never had a problem with that, generally speaking, but it's a good reminder. Put it right by the latch. All complete, everything's tight. Six quarts in it. Check the level. And now you know that everything's been done according to the way that it should be done because you've done it yourself. A little bit of a mess, not too bad. Recycle your oil. A little of sand, dirt, soak that up. Expect a few drips from the undercarriage while some of that drains out, unfortunately. So to reset the oil engine life, just toggle through. It's real simple on the Fords. Percent oil life was at 87%. Of course, I've only got 1,600 miles on it. Hold OK to reset it. So it's reset at 100. Very simple. Did it need to be done right now? Probably not but it doesn't hurt anything. And uh, I'll tow now and feel good about doing that. It's got fresh oil in it, synthetic for a good, probably uh, five or 7,000 miles. Filling her up. Can you come here and get me a, a mango loco? What'd you say? Sure can't. <laughs>